Welcome to Yin. Um, I hope that you guys are ready for a practice that is grounding, but also um, really uplifting, hopefully. So with that being said, we are going to start with our front of our hearts opening in a heart bench-like shape. You can do this with blocks, pillows, or bolster, as long as the heart is being open. So you can have your prop right where the shoulder blades meet, or you can have it down lower. Um, like I'm going to have mine starting right where my sacrum is. Then I'm just gonna sort of melt back over my entire prop. But if you'd like to be more um, thoracic based, you can have your block or a rolled up blanket just between the shoulder blades and then maybe something for under the head. As long as you can begin to feel this opening. So, in yin, we would call this supported fish. You can also call it heart bench. A couple different names. You can notice right away how you'd like your legs to be. You'd like them to be stretched out long, maybe the toes falling out wide to the sides, or perhaps you'd like bent knees, heels in line with the hips. Another option is to place the soles of the feet together and the knees apart. Note whether you need some support beneath the thighs, the knees, or the shins. We're not placing any weight on the knees to help weigh them down, but you are welcome to place a blanket or some sort of weight over the low belly, right across the pelvis. As you inhale, let the sternum lift up towards the sky. And as you exhale, let the shoulders melt down around your prop. Shoulder blades together behind you, sit bones, heavy towards the floor. Letting the eyes be closed. Noticing shapes and colors behind the eyelids. Or perhaps you begin to gaze into the space between your eyebrows at your third eye. Notice what you see there, whether it's color, shapes, maybe imagery. Perhaps you begin to daydream just a little as the mind begins to wander. Observing, welcoming. I'm going to offer your mantra pretty early on in today's practice. So a mantra for the practice today is my heart is beating with peace and love. Not letting that stay really superficial or um, disingenuine, but really let it soak in, perhaps even placing a hand over the heart or even on the other wrist, somewhere locating your heartbeat, your pulse. Perhaps it's fingers to neck, hand to belly or chest, or fingers to the wrist. And really feel the beat. If you prefer, you can just imagine the heartbeat and envision it in that space between the brows. Slow breaths low heartbeat. As the body begins to find rest. Inhaling, my heart is beating. Exhaling with peace and love. Saying this quietly, silently to yourself, slowly, letting it sink in. Inhaling, my heart is beating. Exhaling with peace 
love. Letting it be a felt sensation in the body when you feel peace and love. Perhaps you begin to imagine something, either a memory, it can be a person, a pet, something that brings these feelings of peace and love into your mind and into the body. Continue feeling the pulse and breathing your mantra. My heart is beating with peace and love. Manifesting this, letting it become truer and truer with each breath cycle, with each pump of the heart. Filling the heart space with more and more peace and love, enough that it begins to spread throughout the body. That peace and warmth, that love and softness all mixing together. Can you feel peace and love, a soft, warm sensation in the body? Perhaps even a lightness of the spirit. Imagine beautiful pink light around the heart. creating an inner glow that is now also spreading throughout the body with peace and love, with warmth and softness. What other thoughts, images, or memories are coming to mind? The mind is never completely empty. So acknowledge the thoughts that are present, welcome them. Notice if they bring you love and peace, or if they're thoughts that dim that soft pink light. Reach the arms overhead, reach the legs long and get a full body stretch. Letting the back arch even more. You can even lift the hips up, squeeze the glutes, firm the belly. And begin to lower down. We're gonna come up to a seated position. So if there's a way that you know works best for your body, go ahead and do that. If you'd like to just do a crunch and sit up, you can do that, or roll over onto one side, moving through all fours. Whichever way gets you seated on your sit bones, moving any flesh that might be in the way. If you need to elevate the hips, go ahead and elevate the hips. We're finding our butterfly pose. So soles of the feet together, knees apart. Hands can come towards the shins. Do this enough just to lift up through the heart. Notice any sensations, the inside or the outsides of the knees. Being very careful, mindful of that as you begin to hinge forward. If, if there's
there's any sensation in the knees inside or outside that feels pinchy or like some sort of caution line as you fold forward, stay lifted up high. You can even bring the heels further away from the pelvis and begin to fold forward. Notice if that helps. You can try the opposite, pull the heels in closer, see if that helps. Just be very gentle on yourself. We're not trying to go as deep as we can into this butterfly. We're trying to rest around a two or a three of intensity. Option to really fold forward, to build up the floor to you using props, getting yourself comfortable, finding rest in whichever way you can take it. the mantra for this class is that your heart is beating with peace and love. The theme of this class, of this practice, we could even say the intention could be, um, is that there's no such thing as wasted love. Sometimes we feel like when things end, especially if it's something that we've put a lot of time, effort, love into, whether that is um, a project, a career, a relationship, anything that takes effort and true heart. When it ends, sometimes we feel so hurt, we feel like it was a waste. And there's no such thing as wasted love. So perhaps you can think of a time when you felt like your love was wasted. Wasted on person, a goal, an effort, and then re-speak that situation to yourself in a different way. Recognize that love was present and that that love is now embedded into you, that it's what fuels you what fuels all of us, our beings, our goals, a love of something. So just think of that love as food that fueled you, that helped you grow, and that you put out love into the world during that time. Whether it's something that you are currently being able to benefit from or not, someone else in some way definitely did and they may still be. Reframe what your, your feelings are about failure. Instead of finding failure as a waste of love or effort, find it as a gift of learning and of giving There's no wasting love. Deep inhale. And on the exhale, begin to rise up. And find some movement in your butterfly wings. Very gentle. You can even imagine an actual butterfly either taking flight, so little flutters, or maybe big sweeping movements. Maybe one leg at a time. And we're gonna do sort of a reverse metamorphosis. We're gonna go from butterfly to caterpillar. So straight legs now, 
Again, the option to get a head start on that tip of the pelvis, that nutation of the sacrum, so that kind of flipping under. That way we're not bending with our low back, but it's actually a hinge of the hips. The way to help this is to sit on something and then feel yourself come to the front edges of the tailbone or the sit bones. You can bend the knees, you can place support under the knees for this and begin to take the fold, guiding the heart forward, noticing where you'd like to feel the stretch and where you do feel the stretch. Pose first comes through the low back into the glutes then into the hamstrings. If you'd like to change the sensation, you can do that by bending the knees more or less, or straightening through the spine more or less. Either way, keep the back of the neck long. Let the eyes close and just be where you are. Take a moment here to feel gratitude for all of the love that you've given and that you've received. Take it way back. Exercises or meditations like this, when we can think about the times that really stand out to us or we have felt loved or that we know we have given all of the love we can give to a person or a situation can help us, can reaffirm that that inner knowledge, that inner wisdom, that love abides, and that it grows, and that it's never wasted. It also helps with our mental pathways. Thinking positive thoughts helps begin new positive thoughts. Using this to not only help yourself, but the world around you. We have one life, one world. What a shame it would be to live it only for ourselves. Allow the breath to fill any space. Allow movement to come to the body as you need it. Take a deep inhale and on the exhale begin to roll the spine up. Getting to transition onto your hands and knees, padding beneath the knees if that's something that your body's asking for. And moving through some cat cows here. You might find that one shape, this cow pose where you pull the shoulder blades down and we lift the tailbone up, lift the chest up or the rounding, the hollowing of the front of the body as we expand and really burst through the back of the body up towards the sky. Tailbone tucks under, chin tucks under so that the back of the neck is as long and as round as it can be. Moving through these shapes, maybe adding in different shapes and movements. And 
then we're gonna find our Sphinx Pose. Modification for this, again, is bringing your pillow, your support under the rib cage. Then it gives space for the belly, and it also takes weight off of the elbows and shoulders, if that's something that you're taking care of. Um, the further back that you have your bolster towards your pelvis, the more of a back bend that you're going to feel. So start it closer to the sternum, and then, you know, or the, I guess the collarbones even, um, that direction, and then work your way back depending on how intense you'd like your sphinx to be. And again, we're only going here, maybe a three or four on a scale of one to 10 for intensity. We're not using muscles here in our Sphinx pose like we normally would. Normally we would be engaging the entire posterior chain to hold this here so that other muscles aren't recruited, trying to make this back bend happen. Instead, what we are using is a soft body and props. It's purely positioning. So again, we're kind of just softening the body, letting it be pliable, and then letting it kind of melt onto our props, be manipulated in a way that can serve us well, opening and closing a different place in the body. So again, the front of the body is opening, the back of the body is closing. like to intensify this even more through the front of the pelvis to really open the front of the body, you can tuck the toes and you can lift the knees. Point to your pubic bone, press down and towards the floor. Maybe that gives you a little oomph to lift the heart a little bit more. Yoga Sutra 238 says, strength and vitality come to those who use energy for the greatest good. I'll repeat that again. Strength and vitality come to those who use their energy for the greatest good. All ties back. No love is wasted. With your breath, again, can you locate your heartbeat? Maybe just mentally. Maybe you can imagine it beating with peace and love. Peace and love. Reminds me of that story about Hanuman. I've told it before. It was at this big celebration and he had helped reunite Sita with Ram and it was after she had been stolen by Ravana and there was this whole battle and Hanuman made the leap to save her and lots of lots of crazy things happened. So they're at this banquet and Hanuman was it was half monkey, half man. And so he had these big teeth, you know, like monkey teeth. And he was given all sorts of gifts, like pearls and jewels for his thank you, basically for helping reunite love. Ram and Sita together are the complete wholeness of love. And he was looking at his pearls and he kept biting them and kept trying to scratch into them. He would open every gift and he was just saying, Ram, 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 Ram. Every once in a while he'd say Sita, but mostly it was Ram because Ram was his best friend. And everyone at the banquet would say, he's over there, he's over there, you, you've already spoken with him. And Hanuman would say, no, no, Ram, Sita, Ram. And eventually what he ended up doing to prove his point was that he ended up actually ripping his chest open, which can seem pretty violent, especially as we're in this chest opening position. But think about exposing your heart so much that you actually exposed your heart. And what everyone saw when he opened up his heart so that his beating heart could be seen, 
is that written all over it was Ram, Ram, Sita, Ram, which means love. And what he was trying to show is that love is actually in the heart. It's in our soul, it's in our being. It's not something that we can necessarily accomplish through action. It can come from action, but it lives inside of us regardless. So by opening your heart here, can you imagine that peace and love is written all over your heart? And that all of your actions that you do, the choices you make, the energy that you expend for the greatest good, is all to reveal that love. So we're going to begin to come out of this pose. I'd like you to slide whatever prop you have out of the way. If you can lay completely flat on your belly, completely pronated, I'd like you to do that. If not, I'd like you to either find a table or to find just a seat towards your heels, allowing the spine to be neutral and the breath to flow easily. Welcoming peace over the body. moving in a way that you may need to be moving. And we're going to find ourselves back on our backs. We're going to move into a supported bridge. So finding something, um, I don't, I've used blocks myself, but you can use whatever you have. And you're going to find whatever height is best for you. So start low is my only recommendation. So feet are planted firmly, enough that you can use the glutes to lift up the pelvis and then rest your prop right under your sacrum. A nice flat spot. Take a few moments, tuck the shoulder blades under beneath you, really widen the outer edges of the collarbones, let the palms shine up. And then begin to gauge your edge, noticing if you'd like to lift a little bit higher, or a little bit higher. And then decide how you'd like your legs. You can straighten them out. You can reach your arms overhead. Finding your version of a supported bridge pose. A supported bridge shape. And then just being fully there. If it's helpful, you can place a belly or a hand over the belly. And then breathe the belly into the hand. Allow the face to be soft. Sockets of the eyes relax so the eyeballs even rest heavy on the face. Creases of the forehead begin to smooth. The scalp relaxes. The inner ears release. And so does the jaw. Space now between your upper and bottom rows of teeth. Space between the tongue and the roof of your mouth. Maybe even using the tip of your tongue to feel the base of the bottom row of the front teeth. Feel a widening of the front of the throat. Allowing room for more air to pass up and out, in and down. body and the mind are at ease. The 
breaths begin to slow, steady. The heart rate begins to slow and steady. The body and mind are at ease. Notice what you're aware of at the moment. If you're a wrong answer, you're aware of something. Your mind was somewhere. Your focus, your attention, what was it? And allow the mind to move on to the next thing. As if you're laying on the ground outside looking up at the sky, there's a steady wind that's just blowing these billowy white clouds across your vision through the sky, watching each one pass. Perhaps you can see writing on a cloud or a shape represents something that brings you an emotion, an image. represents something. Be the space in which we can just observe, watching these thoughts, these clouds, float by in their own time. Noticing whatever else you notice. Can you keep your focus mentally as you begin to find your feet back to the floor to remove the prop beneath you? Eye is still in the sky, focus is still on the mind as you roll the spine down. Begin to bend the knees and let the lower back round into the floor. Perhaps hugging the knees to chest or just placing hands to thighs or hands to knees. Awareness still towards our thoughts. Movement if you need some movement. You're welcome to stay here just like this, finding a Wilson up and awesome type shape, or we can work towards our Nandabalasana, our happy baby. That's our next pose for the sequence. So you can grab onto the shins, the feet, whatever you can grab. Soles of the feet shine up towards the sky while the tailbone anchors down towards the ground. For any reason that's uncomfortable for you, again, just hug the knees into the chest as little or as much as you'd like. If deep compression feels icky in the hip flexors, allow some space. Let the arms be straight, just hang on to the knees and let the knees almost pull away from the hands to stretch through the shoulders and the arms. Feel the low belly even catch just a little bit. This is a wood element that we brought into our practice. Again, if you need some movement, welcome the movement. that movement be water-like, either like ocean waves or a river's current, flowing, sweeping.
next we're going to find supine twists. So go ahead and place both feet flat on the floor. Extend your left leg long and then draw just the right knee up. You're going to scoot the hips a little bit to the right and you're going to take your left hand and help draw the right knee across the body for a twist. Now if you need some support under that right knee, you can do what I'm doing just like this and place a block as an option. You can also place that block or some support behind the right shoulder. That way you can rest back into it a bit. Depending on where you choose to have more push or pull, you're going to feel more stretch either in the upper back shoulder area or the low back side hip area. There's no right, there's no wrong. Go with whichever emphasis of the twist feels super good for you. One final option I'll give is to bend through the left knee and then reach for the foot with the right hand. So left hand to right knee, right hand to left foot. breath be smooth. There's a saying of smooth breath. Yes, let it be as smooth as pouring oil from one bowl to the next without any breaks in the flow. So you can imagine that. You have two bowls, one is full of oil. You slowly begin to pour it into the other bowl. And before the first bowl is completely empty, you begin pouring the oil back into it. Constant flow from one bowl to the next. Constant flow of breath from inhale to exhale. Circular wave like. back up through center. Let's windshield wiper through the knees. So knee center so the spine is nice and straight, right in line. And then windshield wiper through the shins. You can draw the shins in and do big circles with the hips, whatever feels neutralizing to you. If you need to pause in one of these shapes for longer than the other, you can pause in one of these shapes. my body right now it feels like my knees need to stay towards the right for a little bit longer so that's what I'm going to do. And then we'll go into that twist on the other side. Whenever you're ready, straightening the right leg long on your mat, hugging the left knee towards the chest, enough so that you can scoot the hips towards the left a little. Then begin to guide that left knee across the body. Right hand towards the left knee. Same option here to begin bending through the other leg, reaching with the left hand towards the right foot. Collarbones are open. Belly feels a nice twist.
Breathe in when you're ready. Again, neutralize the spine. And lift your legs through the legs. Dropping the knees to one side for a little bit longer if that's what feels right. back up. Stretch the arms and legs long. Reach the arms overhead. And then walk the feet towards the right. Maybe crossing the left ankle over the right. Walk the hands and the top of the head towards the right. Perhaps grabbing the left wrist with the right hand. Banana pose. Feeling extension, length through the entire left side of the body. Breathing into that. to straighten the body one straight line through center again and then as you're ready walking the feet towards the left maybe crossing the right ankle over the left hands in front of the head move towards the left left wrist or left hand can grab the right wrist this time and pull towards the left stretching the right side of the body made all these beautiful rainbow like shapes with the body today. Whatever a rainbow represents to you, maybe channeling that now, letting it be positive, filled with love. Breathing in, my heart is beating. Breathing out, peace and love. back through center. Bring the hands down by the hips and then just begin to tuck the tailbone under and roll up into a very gentle bridge and then roll back down. Do that one more time. Roll up and roll down. Time to begin setting up for Shavasana. So begin getting comfortable. That can be um, any way. You can have legs up the wall. You can have your body flat. If I could suggest something for you for your Shavasana today, it would be a combination of things that we've done. It would be how we started, that supporting fish, but also with some support under the knees. So grabbing maybe two pillows, one for the back and one for under the knees, and perhaps something, a weight for the pelvis. Hands can be to the belly, feeling the breath move the hands, perhaps over the heart, supporting the heartbeat, or maybe down to the floor. Again, there's no right or wrong. Just take your time setting up, finding a place that is comfortable for you.
never rushing peace because we cannot rush it. Taking your time. Once you find a position where your body feels very comfortable, notice if there's any way you could be more comfortable, what that would look like. And once you're there, let the eyes softly close. Let the lids become heavy as if you were falling asleep. The temples soften and widen. And the breath shifts to the softness to a natural breath. Maybe the lips are slightly parted. You feel relaxed at the face and the top of the head. The back of the head through the ears and jaw. Supported, relaxed. The back of the neck, the throat, the sides and the front of the neck are relaxed and soft. The shoulders are at ease. The collarbones have space. The chest is free to move with your breath, expanding in all directions, yet light. The upper back is heavy, supported, grounded. The ribs are soft, there's space. The abdomen, the low back, relaxed and soft. The hips and the glutes. Heavy and soft. Can you feel warmth in the pelvis as it becomes to feel heavy? The tops of the thighs, the backs of the thighs, the muscle that normally hugs the bone begins to soften and relax. The knees relax, the kneecaps release, even the foreleg, the shin, the calves, they soften as well. The upper arms, the elbows, the forearms, everything is soft and relaxed. The wrists and the ankles feel soft, supported, free to move, yet with no desire to move. The palms, the feet, the fingers, the toes, everything is soft and resting.
appreciate the stillness of your body. And appreciate the body itself for everything it is and everything it isn't. It's the body that's yours today. What can you do with it? What can you do acts of love, service, with this recognition that there's no wasting love? It is an act of kindness or of love that you can show to someone today without the need for it to be reciprocated or even recognized, it can be anonymous. How can you send just a little piece of love or maybe a big chunk of love to someone else today, knowing that there's no way that would be wasted because it's love that you're putting out into the world. That's what the world needs. Taking a time to let an intention maybe naturally arise. To begin to wake up the body, either through awareness sensing the places in the body or through movement, moving places in the body. Finding each breath, bringing in more energy, more alertness, more presence to the space that you're in, not just the moment that you're in. Blinking the eyes open, noticing who and what is around you. Can you look at everything with love? Can everything around you give you a feeling of love? Let that feeling continue to open and to spread. Like that pink glowing light that we let spread through the body. Let it grow, let it radiate outward shining now away from your body, towards others, towards the world. Begin moving in a way that allows you to prepare to transition towards a seated position. Sitting any way that's comfortable. We're gonna find a mudra together. couple of breaths and then to bring hands to heart center. This is Anjali Mudra. It's actually pronounced Mudra, I learned. So if you catch me saying Mudra, just know that I'm trying to correct myself. We're always a work in progress. So for this Mudra, I'm going to interlace all of your fingers like spaghetti fingers. Anahada Mudra, heart Mudra, love. Release the pinkies together index fingers and the thumbs. It's like we're doing that I love you sign but with both hands. And then bring the thumbs to the forehead. Inhale. Thinking thoughts of love towards others. And you exhale. Bring them down to the mouth. Speaking words of love about and to others. And down to the heart feeling love towards ourself and others. Inhale, my heart is beating. Exhale, peace and love. Let everything soften. Invite and joy. Slight tuck of the chin, a bow of the head. And now a bow forward. Om Shanti. Wishing all of you Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace.